most, most windlass manufacturers state that the windlass you need should be calibrated by the weight of your ground tackle times three. Okay, so if we, if we measured the weight of our chain and our anchor, multiplied it times three, which has absolutely nothing to do with the shape of our hull, the weight of our boat, the windage of our boat, you know, the bottoms that we're going to be anchoring in, it doesn't have anything to do with that. What you've got to figure is, you've got to figure that this windlass is going to be responsible for retrieving your ground tackle on a boat that could be very heavy, could be very light, could dance around in the wind and be all over the place, could be anchored in coral or could be anchored in mud. So what do you do? We always get the next bigger size. We would always get the next bigger size, recommended by the manufacturers. For this boat with our ground tackle, we should have bought a 2200. This is a 3500. Remember too, that the, the bigger the windlass, the lower the gear ratio. What does that mean? Bigger the windlass, the lower the gear ratio means it's slower and more powerful. It's slower and more powerful. The smaller the winch, the higher the gear ratio, which means it's faster, yeah, more convenient, but it's not nearly as powerful as this, as this windlass, as, as a bigger windlass, because when you're anchoring in coral, in 90 feet of coral, in Fiji, let's just say, and your anchor is stuck in the coral, there's no way in the world you're gonna go down there and be able to free up that anchor. This windlass, it might go grinding away. It might pull your bow under the water about six inches, but I'll guarantee you it'll pop up all of a sudden because it will have the power to break that anchor free of anything, or most anything, most anything. So therefore, we have a big windlass. This, by the way, has a reversing solenoid. See these two switches? These are the two deck switches. One is, of course, to retrieve it, retrieve the, the anchor gear, and the other one is to deploy it. Now, why would you say, why do I need to deploy an anchor when gravity is gonna do it for me? Well, what happens when you deploy an anchor and it just runs out carrying the chain with it, let's just say carrying the chain with it, and it goes to the bottom and the chain is very heavy so it continues to fall, and where does it fall? It falls on top of the anchor. It falls on top of the anchor. So that when you start your back down to dig in your anchor, as you should, the, your own chain could fall in your own windlass. Okay, or it could even make a knot. So what you want to have a reversing solenoid, reversing solenoid for is you want to control the fall of the chain. I mean, first of all, of course, the anchor, and then control the fall of the chain. And of course, when you know you've gotten to the bottom, then you still ease it out a little bit as you're backing down. And you will always have a straight anchor road instead of everything dumping down at once. That's why you want a reversing solenoid. That's why we have the two switches here.